Uh, hello, uh, I'm Alberto Pochettino. I'm one of the cardiovascular surgeons at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester. And today I'd like to talk to you about the treatment of aortic arch aneurysm. Uh, aortic arch aneurysm uh, need to be treated like any other part of the aorta when they become enlarged to prevent dissection and rupture. What's unique about the aortic arch, it's twofold. Number one, the vessels that go to the brain come from the aortic arch, and therefore the significance is, is uh, important because of that. And the second, somewhat related to it, is that we cannot use the general vascular technique used in other parts of the aorta to treat it. That is to say, when we treat a dilated, diseased aorta anywhere else, we isolate it, usually with vascular clamp. We often provide assistance to the body so that it can compensate for that isolation. Then we cut out the aorta and replace it. Now, we cannot isolate the arch and thus isolate brain blood flow. Therefore, different methods has to be used. The method that has been developed over the years that works well for this application is what's called hypothermic circulatory arrest. Now, what that technique entails is cooling the entire body. At a lower temperature, all tissue require less oxygen and therefore we can be without adequate blood flow without suffering permanent damage. So that's the principle of hypothermia. Now, even with hypothermia, the brain does not like absolutely no blood flow. Therefore, when we reach the temperature that is safe for the rest of the body and we turn off blood flow in a standard fashion, we then start some form of selective brain or cerebral perfusion such that the brain getting some blood flow even at those low temperature. At that time, we can then cut out the diseased aortic arch and then reconstruct it as appropriate to eradicate the disease. Once the reconstruction is completed, we then go back on a heart-lung machine in a standard fashion and rewarm the entire body and complete whatever other repair may need to be done. Now, the issue is that this technique is clearly different than anything else we do in the rest of the aorta. And because of its difference, it has become over the years something that not as many surgeons or many cardiac programs are comfortable utilizing. Um, it is common, unfortunately, that when the aortic arch is involved in the ascending aorta, in fact, most aortic arch aneurysm are not there in isolation, but they are a continuation of the ascending aortic aneurysmal dilatation or the beginning of a descending aortic aneurysmal disease that extends often in the thoracoabdominal aorta. In those settings, it is common to see other surgeons or institutions try to ignore the aortic arch and treat the larger ascending or descending aorta and leave the arch unattended, untreated. Unfortunately, what that does is that often enough, that segment becomes diseased over time and then some reoperation needs to be performed to address that segment. That's become part of my practice. Um, and it's somewhat un unfortunate because if that is addressed the first time, when the ascending aorta is the primary focus or the descending aorta, the patient has no aneurysmal disease left behind, and therefore you don't have to worry about what might happen down the road. Um, I would advocate that in an environment where the techniques that I described are common routine, they're utilized efficiently, that the aortic arch should be addressed whenever disease is present. Certainly, that's our approach here at the Mayo Clinic, and in, in individuals that have that segment involved in, in aortic disease, we would take care of it up front. If you have any question about the management of aortic arch aneurysm, please feel free to call the number provided. Thank you very much.